Well, hello. Welcome to one of my favourite winter silverfish haunts, Hallcroft Fishery, not too far from Sheffield. Now, I come here most weekends through the winter. It's got some brilliant, brilliant matches on. And the focus for most of the anglers is these things, skimmers. There's absolutely thousands of them in Hallcroft. This is a particularly lively example. And one of the smaller fish, probably, it has to be said, about, I don't know, six, eight ounces. Look at those. Absolutely lovely. And what we're doing today, we've got a really simple approach on the go to catch them. And the best thing about it, being a tight northerner, it's quite cheap as well. So I'm just going to show you my rig. Then I'm going to tell you what I'm feeding. And then I'm going to give you your weekly fishing forecast. So we've just got a dead simple four inch hook length of 010 reflow power line, a size 18 F1 pellet hook, strung bulk of five number nine shots about an inch and a half apart, that's 011 main line and a four by 12 F1 dink float, bit of skimmer slime on it there as well. And we've just got pink hydro above that, oh, and a little kinder pot on the end of the pole. Try and get that as close to the end of the pole as you can nice and accurate for your feed and all we're doing we're actually fishing one of the two-in-one micros in three mil on the hook so that's the hook bait you're allowed any hook pellet you want here at all so you can use pretty much anything it's got one of those i'm just taking care to hook it dead carefully so that it's plenty of points showing i'm just flattening it down so that basically when I strike, the hook's going to pull through the bait and into the fish. Feed-wise, it's the fishery 2mm micro pellets. These are the Coppins ones. Just about, I don't know, 15 in that little kinder pot there. I've just been fluctuating that through the day. The key is when it comes to feeding for this sort of pellet fish, I'm going to call it, less is almost always more. Really strange with other baits, like for example, Blood Worm and Joker and ground bait, you'd probably put three pots in at the start or something like that. With pellets, it's the opposite. You want to feed very little, get the fish competing for the bait, and they just seem a lot easier to catch if there's not a lot of bait in your peg. I've got a marker on the far bank that I've lined up quite carefully with, quite a small marker. And the next job, I'm just going to get out there, turn the pot upside down. The bait's not going to fall out because I've sort of pushed it down. And then I'm going to drop the pot under the water, dead in line with that marker, so then pellets go down to the bottom. Just give it a little tap to make sure all the stragglers are out. Lift all the rig out of the water and drop that strung bulk dead over the marker. And then I'm just going to hold the flow out the water about six inches above the water, count to about ten. It's Tom Pickering's ten seconds rule. Never fails with this kind of fishing for me. And then drop the float down in line with the marker. And while we're waiting for a bite, I'll tell you what I think is going to happen this weekend. I think it's good news, folks. I think it's going to be a great way to start the new year if you're going on the bank. It's mild. The forecast is telling me 10 to 12 degrees in a lot of areas, which is really mild for early January. So that tells me the fish will probably be on the feed at most kinds of venues. But it's not forced to be comfortable fishing, unfortunately. We've got wind forecast. We've got rain forecast which I think might make it a little bit tricky to present a rig in certain areas because I'm seeing gusts of up to 50 kilometres an hour, so it's quite, quite windy, really. It's no bad thing for the fishing. It's just worth taking your time and being careful. If you can choose where you're going to fish, sit with the wind off your back, sit somewhere comfortable. Oh, little dink there, but I missed it. Too busy talking to you lot. If it's um, more settled where you are, then obviously you're fine. But obviously, if you've got to sit in the wind, make sure you've got your feeder rod with you. Make sure you've got some big pole rigs with you so that you're able to fish comfortably and present your bait well. So definitely take a feeder rod most places. Commercial fishery-wise, I think the carp, the F1s and the bream will feed well with that rising temperature. I really do. You can afford to feed a little bit of bait this weekend. Still winter, so take it steady. You know, start off little and often and then you can always obviously up the ante as the day goes on. But I definitely think with that rise in the water temperature the fish will be responding to bait so don't be afraid to kick off a line by feeding i don't know maybe 10 or 15 micros or you know, a little bit of ground bait to get the fish in the peg hunting around and feeding because they will feed this weekend I'll lift that rig out 
drop it down again. It's never always worth, if you go a few seconds without a bite, just, just working it, it drop past the fish's face again. Always good advice this time of year. You're going on the rivers, just make sure you check the EA's river level forecast because, because uh, obviously this rain doesn't always fall evenly everywhere. Some rivers will be hit worse than others. And that website will just tell you what's happening on whatever river you're wanting to go on. Now, it could well be because it's falling, you know, fairly recently over the weekend, that the river's still rising, which is never ideal. But I'd always rather it be rising with some warmer water, and it is warm rain, than with cold water. So maybe not cause to be despondent, but if you've got the option of hanging fire and going fishing maybe Monday or Tuesday, I think then it'll be absolutely cock on because by then the river will be dropping. Oh, that's a nice little bite there. And a falling river is always, always best. So, take the time with that one. It's gone a bit mad, gone a bit lively. So yeah, the rivers will be quite good for both big fish and small fish if you know where to head. I think the bream and barb will certainly have a go with that rise in temperature. Just wait for the river to start dropping and uh, I think you'll be guaranteed some good sport. Coloured water, so big smelly baits, you know the drill. And lastly, we come on to canals. Well, I think, to be honest, on um, a slightly better fish, that one, a 12 ouncer. Depending on where you're heading, if you're going small fish fishing on canals, always head to the uh, town centres. Again, it's going to be coloured water this weekend, so think more a ground bait sort of attack in a lot of areas than uh, maybe a, a, a bread based attack. But again, it depends on where you're going canals colour up differently. It's a clear canal, bread, hemp, that sort of thing could be really, really good. So there you have it folks, rivers, lakes and canals all covered. Have a brilliant new year, have a brilliant weekend on the bank and hopefully you'll get amongst some lovely fish like I am today at Holcroft. Happy New Year. <laughs>